What's going on people? It's Hajimoto. I'd like to talk to you today about scope cams. You may remember a few years back I did a tutorial on a how to build your own scope cam set, set up so that you could utilize a GoPro. Now in that I showed every step all the parts that you needed to build what you see right here. Over the years you've seen some of my footage that showed pellet in flight. Here's the downfall or the, the problem with this particular setup is it's not a robust fixed package. It slips over the eyepiece using friction and the alignment of this on center through the scope is completely set up before you use it. So you have to look through some kind of a video feedback, either something that's got a live feed or you're looking at the LCD screen on the back if you have the backpack unit something to know that you're perfectly in center with the scope at maximum power and focused everything looks good here's the problem if you nudge that hit that in any way you have no idea that this thing is off and you miss some great footage because this got knocked off and it's out of the way well i'm here to tell you today that the gopro is the premier platform for catching pellets in flight the frame rate that a GoPro offers is pretty much unsurpassed. When they came out with the 6, the 6 introduced 1080p at 240 frames a second. It has been my experience that 240 is the sweet spot in order to freeze a pellet so that you can clearly see it in all of those frames as is demonstrated in some of these up here. Some of the footage that I'm showing though is captured in 720. Because the Hero 3, 4, either blacks or silvers, only had 720 at 240 frames, it's a little blurry. But you could see the pellet really, really clearly. Well, I'm never too proud to say when someone has built a better mousetrap. Working with Val and Thane on trying to get a system that could be utilizing people's older equipment, meaning folks that have Hero 3s or 4s and be able to do scope cam footage as I showed in my videos previously. So that being said, this old boy that has served me very, very well and has produced a lot of video content, which a lot of you guys have seen over the years, is coming off and I'm going to be replacing it with a better, which I consider more superior unit than this friction uh, fit system that has served me well. We're going to introduce the Side Shot GoPro. There is a band that goes around your scope and they sell these bands in both 1 inch, 30 millimeter and 34. They come in those different dimensions and this is what the band looks like. Clamps onto the tube of your scope. You have two bayonets here. Inside there is an image splitter which allows the shooter to put their eye to the cup, see what's downrange, just like mine did. But here's the difference. Once this thing has been put on and set up properly, there's no more adjustment. This goes in, it goes straight against the back of the scope tightly. You snug these two thumb screws up that are on the side. That's it. This is an assembly. It's part of it. It's not moving anywhere. Because the eyepiece, the bell, fits into a recession inside the uh, side shot there's no way it can move I'm pushing I couldn't never do this with my setup if I even tried that with mine it would be off and I would have to start all over again here's where I came into the picture and that is there's a lot of us out here that have the older GoPros and maybe you don't really want the 240 but just want scope cam footage in general so here's the older ones and I have several of these this one happens to be set up for night vision because I'll change the lenses in it so that it's an IR filter. And on this particular case, I have modified this case. This is a case that has provisions for a four. And as you can see, my four goes right in, closes, and it's locked down. Completely safe, dry, no issues. So here's the part about this that makes it even better. If you buy multiple rings, and let's say, you just want to swap this thing from one rifle to the other. On my setup, that required you to get the video feed to make sure that the image was square and stable. 
Not with this system. This is my Evanix Airspeed. Totally different rifle. And in seconds, all I do is introduce the side shot right into a set of rings that have already been put on, butt it up, tighten, and we're ready to go. Just like that, I've got video capture right on the side of it from one rifle to the other in a matter of seconds. The image quality is second to none. And this is why the GoPro reigns supreme. It is an action camera that produces clear images and is made to be banged around. And when you're out in the woods hunting, or if you drop your rifle or bump it against a tree, there's two bad things that can happen. One, you can hurt the camera, and two, you can knock the camera off and not catch the footage when you needed it most. If you have an older GoPro and you want to try to modify your GoPro so you can use it, any of you with your GoPros know that they have a, focal, a focus point of no less than 12 inches. Anything closer than 12 inches, it gets blurry. So the unit has to be modified so that the lens can be adjusted so you can adjust that focus to make it more of a macro lens. Okay, in order to modify your GoPro, there's gonna be a few things you're going to need. You're gonna need a razor knife, a pair of pliers, some black duct tape, some mark, a Sharpie marker, super glue, and a paintbrush. The paintbrush, some super glue, and duct tape are all optional, but we'll get to that now. Uh, the Sharpie, you wanna mark the top of the lens and somewhere on the case so that you can bring that lens back to that focus point so you can get the camera back to stock after you, uh, if you want to go back to the normal position. Taking your razor knife, slip it underneath the plastic collar and just pry up as you go around. On a four, this will pop right off. On a three, you're gonna have to cut in order to cut the, the plastic all the way around. Once that's off, here's where the tape will come into play. If you want to put that tape around the lens or on the jaws, grab the edge of the lens only and turn counterclockwise if you're looking at the face. And what you're trying to do is move this back and forth and get it loose so that you can then focus it. You want to hook it to some kind of a video feed at this point and you're trying to focus it in on the, what the focal length is for your crosshairs. So if your eye relief is four inches, that's what you're trying to get completely focused. Then you'll put it in and you'll double check to make sure that that's in focus. Another option is to take the fisheye lens out completely and replace it and pull production sells one that or uh, different lenses for GoPros. I don't recommend going above six. Anything more than that and the image is going to be zoomed in so much you're not going to see it. A 4.5, I'd say anywhere from four to six is a really good choice. I'll have a link to these guys in the description below. Feel free to go there and pick out the lenses that you would want if you want to go that route. Another option, guys, is to do it in post-production. I'm not going to get into how you do that, and I'm showing uh, results from a, a search that I did on Google. You can see there's a ton of videos out there that'll walk you through how to get rid of fisheye in post-production. So you can modify your GoPro, use the fisheye lens, but you will need to get rid of that fisheye in post-production. There's another way of doing it, which is linear mode, but when you get into the higher modes, it'll only use wide, and wide will have that fisheye bend to it. So either you do it through uh, post-production or you change the lens outright. I can't say enough about the guys at SideShot, Thane and Val, what a great job you guys have done. And like I said, I have no problem conceding to a better mousetrap. Much better deal here. Any of you that want to do scope, scope cam footage and want to have high resolution images need to consider this configuration. The ability for everybody to have one of these devices that's not going to cost you an arm and a leg to do, but just the ability for everyone to have one on their hunting scope, on their target scope, whatever they're going to be using. Something simple, easy, doesn't obstruct your view, uh, very quick and simple, easy setup.